everybody. I am here to make a little video about mess ups yet again. I recently did a very fun trade with a friend on, on Instagram and I had been looking for a camera that was sort of like the Mamiya RB67 which I have previously owned and I had for about a year and I really liked it but I needed the money and so I sold it and also I was I had recently picked up a Kiev 6C and a Kiev 60 so I was like mm, these are good they're like a thousand pounds lighter feeling anyways um, also slightly modular and I like the square format so I just kind of gave up on the RB but when John reached out about doing a trade for my Mamiya 645 that I didn't really want and didn't plan on using, I was pretty excited at first and then I had to think about it because I was like, do I actually really want to get another giant camera? And if I did, would I actually use it? And I believe that this time in history, the answer is yes. So the trade on my end was to receive a Mamiya Universal press camera with a 6x7 and a 6x9 back and a 100mm f3.5 lens and a grip that goes on right here with a little, little shutter release cable that goes up here. It's great. I freaking love it and it's gigantic and it's kind of the best of both worlds because I have also previously shot with a Fujika GL690 and that camera was amazing, but there was something about it that as a rangefinder camera that's that big and the lenses are just like these honking beast things. I don't know, I just wasn't very drawn to using it very often. I did like one little portrait shoot with my girlfriend and I used it outside every so often. I would put it on a tripod, but I wasn't like bringing it around very often and like it was just so big. Um, but something about it didn't feel like it was worth being as big as it was. I don't know how to describe it, but for some reason with the RB67 and with this camera, the involvement that you need to actually make a picture, it's so close to, and also very different, but so close to shooting 4x5, um, at least in my experience, which is very little. The Fujika G, GL690 was more, more just like you focused and then you shot your photo and then you'd advance and then there you go and that was kind of it i mean it had you know you had to get the exposure right there's nothing automatic on that camera but this camera having just the way it is with the like having to and then pull out the dark slide and focus it and then fire the shutter press this and wind to get on to the next frame it just feels more involved and it feels like a lot nicer to me but in that what this video is mostly about is mess ups with this camera. The moment I got this camera I was really excited and I had no idea truly how to use it. Not until I did uh, shot my first test roll inside did I realize that it, I had done something terribly wrong which was not extend this collapsible lens. When I first got it, it was in and locked. And I was like, this is a great little lens, this is so cool. I didn't even see, and I don't think you're going to be able to see, but in here there's a little bit um, recess that says normal with an arrow. I didn't see that at all, and so I left it, and then I think I was on like frame 6 or 7 or something, and I went to change the uh, shutter speed, and I grabbed it, and I turned it, and it went loose, and I was like, oh crap, so I twisted it back really quick, and I was like, oh, did I do something wrong? Like, did I ruin something? I thought like maybe the lens block or something weird was just gonna fall out if I let it go. So I popped it back in, locked it, and I was like, ah, whoosh, whoosh. And then I developed the photos. All of them were blurry. I was like, what the hell is going on? And then I realized I found a message board and a little thread about it. And in order to get proper focus, you have to kind of like with the LTM, like, like a thread mount collapsible lenses and the fed and in Death Star lenses and stuff, you have to pull them out, lock it, and then you can get proper focus. If you leave them recessed in the body, you don't get focus at all. You just get blurry images, and that's what happened to me. So from now on, I'm just gonna leave it out 
just so I don't forget. Unless I'm traveling with it, then I'll put it in and lock it. So that's one thing. With this lens in particular, the 100mm f3.5, be sure to extend it and lock it before you take photos, because otherwise you're going to have a real terrible time developing your photos and having nothing be in focus. And I will put up some example photos in a minute of how blurry they are. There's absolutely, there are barely any details. This lens was meant to be used with the Bellows system, I believe, on the Universal, the Super 23, and the very first Mamiya Universal, or Mamiya Press camera. They had a back Bellows. This helped, you know, with the Bellows, you can keep the lens recessed and get infinity or something. Uh, don't quote me on that. But, so that's the first thing. Make sure you extend the lens before you make photos with this camera. Another thing that's pretty standard is this camera doesn't have a locking mechanism. So if you are using this, the, the grip, which has, I have it right here, um, usually there's a shutter release cable that comes out of here, this little silver bit, and it runs the length uh, connecting here, runs down here, and goes right into this little port here. With that, you can fire the shutter with this and hold the camera and walk around and it's pretty great, pretty handy. If you're not careful and you advance the, the shutter and you're ready and you're on frame one and you take the photo you want and then you advance the shutter again because you're like, oh, I took that photo, blah, blah, blah. You had, you had pulled out the dark slide, you put it back and you forgot to advance the film here. You need to always advance this, and by doing that, you press this switch over, this little tiny tab here, I don't know if you can see that. You push it over, and when you're doing that, you pull this out, and then it'll help you, or it'll let you wind, and it usually winds about that much. One, and about there, and then that'll be the next frame. It's a little less than two whole full strokes. You don't want to hold this down the whole time. You don't want to push it over and keep your finger pushing on the tab while you advance, because if you do that, then you'll just keep advancing and it won't relock until either the roll is out or you finally let it go and it gets to the next frame fully. If you're not wanting to, to do multiple expo exposures on one frame, advance the film. Because if you don't, you're going to get some weird stuff that you were not looking forward to or trying to get at all. That's another little thing there. It's not going to stop you from taking a photo. It just won't. So you have to stop yourself and plan ahead. Another thing that I like about this camera and I loved about, about the RB and also the Bronica ETRSI systems is this dark slide is really fun. You don't even have to pull it out all the way. You can pull it out to about there and it'll let you take the photo and then pop it back in boop, all the way and then just so about there, take a photo, pop it back in and then advance the film as before, burp, and then there you go, and then you're done. Next photo is ready, you just do that, cock your shutter, get it framed up, exposure right, blah blah blah, fire the shutter, dark slide back in, and then advance again. And it's, it's a pretty simple thing, it is easy to forget, especially I feel like if you were doing like a high demand job or something, or you were like trying to get a lot of photos at once, it would be kind of easy to forget a step, but then also with this camera, it's not like the fastest camera on the planet. So, I mean, they were meant for press photographers, so it is pretty amazing that they could get the photos that they got with these. So I think it is possible, but it's just, does it work for you to do that? And will you actually remember all the steps in the process of trying to shoot very fast? I don't think I would. So. Maybe there's a different camera in your future for those types of jobs or those ideas or whatever. But dark slide, don't forget to pull that out when you're taking your photo because again, it won't stop you from taking a photo. It's just gonna let you fire away and it would be the worst to do multiple exposures and never take out the dark slide and have like, you know, thought that you took all 10 photos and maybe you wanted multiple exposures on all 10 shots you had plans and then you thought okay cool I took just took 20 photos 10 frames develop it all blank that would be terrible so don't don't let it happen to you it can happen a lot easier than than you think it's cool because it has this little film reminder uh, if you have film in here you can always you know just 
pull it out, put a new thing in if you're shooting color, black and white. It has this little dial here. It says 100 right now. I don't know if you can see that, but you can move this over and it will change it to whatever other lens you have on, which will, which I have the 100 on right now, so I'm gonna leave it. That'll change the frame lines in your viewfinder. So you'll actually have proper framing. I think it has 100, 150, and 250. If you do get the 65, um, or the 75 or whatever, you'll need an external viewfinder, which they do have. They're just kind of hard to find. It's kind of exciting. And the these backs, the, I have the 6x7 and 6x9, they have um, a little pressure plate on the inside and you can pull it out and flip it and slide it back in and it'll make it go from 120 to 220. And then you have this little dial here that you just twist and it goes from 120 to 220 as well. So when you're shooting 120, you want to make sure the pressure plate, it'll say 120 on the pressure plate if it's set in the right position. And if it's not, it'll say 220. So you want to switch that to be 120 and then switch this to be 120 as well just by twisting it. Another thing is if you have, here, let me take the back off. If you have, a different adapter that you want to use. So here's the back of the camera. If you have a different adapter that you want to use, there's these little dials. There's one here, this little black tab, and another one on this side. And what you want to do is just push them down, burp, like burp, and be careful, don't do it like I'm doing it, which I'm not actually doing it, but don't do it like in the air. Um, you want to lay it down on a table or make sure it's in a safe place then this back can pop pop off pull off and you'll see i can't really show you because I, the lighting is probably not good enough or something but in here <coughs> where the tab pulls down and where this bar here connects which is just the side of the adapter here there's a little bit of silver underneath it and if you pull this tab down you can see the silver bar slide down which releases this and that's how you know that you're doing it right so that's pretty cool. It just has a little locking si system going on. And it's pretty helpful if you have a Polaroid back or whatever adapter you want to throw on there to shoot whatever subjects you're trying to shoot and however you want to shoot them. Yeah, this camera's super versatile. It is pretty beastly, um, but I think it comes with the territory. When you're using this camera, you just want to make sure that your lens is prepared for you you have a dark slide, it's prepared. <clears throat> You're prepared to pull it out when you need to. Your lens selector for frame lines is set correctly so that you're prepared that way. You're not gonna forget to advance your film. You're not gonna forget to make sure the pressure plate on the inside is set to the right film. You wanna make sure these are locked because they unlock by twisting them like this and they lock by twisting them like that. And there's two of them. Another thing about this, which I almost forgot to say, is that you want to make sure when you're loading, when you put this back on, there is this little black bar here at the top. Hopefully you can see that. There's a little lip there. So when you're putting this back on, these are turned this way to loosen it and you pop it out. You wanna put the lip of this film holder underneath and make sure it's lined up with these little buttons too. There's gonna be a little silver kind of cutouts almost because of the twisting of this and where it locks. So you wanna make sure those two are lined up and this goes underneath there and then that'll be set. And when you lock it, you can hold this without it letting the whole front of the camera fall off. Because if you don't lock it up here and you only lock it down here, all this frontal weight is gonna pull this body eventually. Um, you'll, you'll notice and it won't be pretty, probably, unless you catch it. Make sure it's set correctly and you'll have a safe little camera. I'm gonna show you some mess up pictures of me not extending the lens and show you how bad they look. And then I'm gonna show you photos that I took today with the lens extended properly and show you how they can look good and show you how, they're just photos around my house so they're not like, you know, amazing photos, but how they can be sharp and how they can look appropriate and how you want want them to be and get proper focus. So here are some images and I'll talk to you again in a minute.
Okay, so hopefully those images were something, like a good comparison. I'm gonna put two of the images up again, side by side right now, just to show you very, very clearly how, like the same subject, just to show you how bad it can be. So here those are. So maybe you see what I mean, they're just, it's <laughs> night and day. Luckily, there's resources out there. So always when you're, when you're purchasing a camera, or you're doing a trade, or inheriting a camera, or finding one on the side of the road, I don't know, just look up, Google it, look it up, search for things. There's so many outlets out there, so many resources for <clears throat> pretty much any question that you might have. Some cameras surprisingly have very little information. The Mamiya Universal Press, the latest of the Mamiya Universals, or Mamiya, Mamiya Press cameras, has a lot less than the other two, and I don't know why, but luckily I came across that. And yeah, it's just good to always search, and if you have a buyer you can ask questions and stuff, then you should try that too, because hopefully they'll know about the camera they sold you. But yeah, really great. Look things up, educate yourself and then use the heck out of it, because that's the best way to, you know, to have any tool or whatever you want to call it uh, at your disposal. Just use it up. I am just happy to be here and happy to be getting to use fun cameras and make videos, and hopefully you're having fun out there as well and, like, you know, having fun watching these videos. There's more to come. And comment down below if you're if you've been coming across any cameras that have really like blown your mind that you really want to use or that you've gotten your hands on that you're excited to use and maybe message me on Facebook or add me on Facebook or uh, not Facebook <laughs> Woo, sorry Instagram um, and maybe like show me images that you've made with the cameras or something because that would be exciting I would love to see those and yeah that's about it just excited about all this stuff. So thanks for stopping by, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.